Oh, hey guys, let's talk about a few more pro tips. These pro tips are going to be about in-betweening and everything that goes into the thought process of in-betweening. So here I've got my animation. I can scrub through it here and I can see it playing. If I double click on the symbol, I can go inside and I can see it playing out here. So the first pro tip that I want to talk about is timing and fixing your timing and figuring out how to make it look good before you go and do your in-betweens. So when you think about timing, you gotta think about your frames per second. So this is 30 frames per second, and right now my entire animation goes for 30 frames, which means that everything on this timeline is gonna happen in one second. Now this is happening pretty quick, and it's gonna be done in a fraction of a second. To test it, I can hit control enter you can see what's happening is it's playing through the animation and then it's getting to a blank keyframe right here on frame 7 and then it's holding blank for the remainder of the second now this guy is going too fast so before I start in between it I want to get the timing all worked out so to do that I can come inside of this symbol I can click anywhere up on the top and hit F5 twice and wherever that bar is it'll add more frames to the current keyframe. And then if I hit control enter, this is a common mistake that even I make sometimes, um, even still today after years of doing this, where you'll see it's chopping off early. And that's because back out on my stage, it's going until frame six right here. And then inside of the symbol, it's going till frame 12. So what I gotta do is go back out on my stage click on this blank keyframe, extend that out to frame 13 so that it's holding through frame 12, and then I can hit control enter again and actually see the entire thing dissolving. So here's another pro tip about timing. Do all of your retiming before you do your in-betweening. I'll show you what I mean by that. So I come to this guy here, I go inside, and I'm testing my timing out, and it just feels really, really even meaning it's all just kind of like breaking and swirling apart at the same time. And nothing's really that punchy or interesting about it, right? Now, that's because all of my keyframes are evenly spaced. I'm moving it about the same distance from frame to frame. And then I'm also spacing my keyframes out on the timeline evenly. So if the motion up here is even, and then my timing on the timeline is even, then the overall feeling of it is going to be even. So even though it's not in between, it's not smooth, I can still tell by looking at it that it's going to be boring once I do in between it. So to prevent myself from extra work later, where, you know, after I've drawn in every single in between and then I've got to retime it and move things around, that would actually mean that I would need to delete work that I've done. I can avoid all that by I don't know, grab this bunch here and move them over and see how that feels. So there you go. Now it's got a nice punch at the beginning and then it slows out and I can imagine that slow motion happening at the end. So there's another pro tip on in betweening. And then this final one I'll go into and it's kind of related to a pro tip I mentioned in the previous tutorial where you're working on separate layers and you remember we have when I turn outline mode on, we have these two separate guys here, and it makes life easier working on them. We'll you'll notice that within these two layers, there's these secondary shapes. So like in this fire layer, I've got orange and I've got yellow. Well, when I go in and I want to in between that, I hit F7 right here. Oops, let's in between this guy. Yeah, right there. Hit F7 there. And then I set my onion skin to just one frame before and one frame after. You'll notice that it's really hard to see. Uh, it's hard to see what's what. It's hard to tell where one edge is ending and where another one's beginning. And then I can hide the water layer and that helps a little bit. Some of these are easy to see, like I can tell right here that, that line is in between this guy and that guy, right? And then I can kind of tell that this orange line and this one are like that, so then that orange one would go in here and then it kind of might do this. But I very quickly start getting lost with all these lines. It's especially easy to get lost if you're in outline mode. 
There's lots of craziness going on. So here's a tip that'll save you a lot of that trouble when you're in between. If I simply create a new layer and then I select this guy uh, by clicking on the layer here, and then I can right click on the frames, copy frames, click on this layer so that all of these are selected, and then paste frames. Now I have a duplicate of the animation. So I hide one layer that I had. It doesn't matter which order you do this in. And I'll delete all the orange. There we go. There we go. So yeah, there was only a yellow there and there. And then up here, I want the yellow to go away. So I can eye drop the orange and paint fill yellow. Like so. All right, now the yellow's behind, so I need to grab this layer and order it on top so it shows up on top. Now, I can hide the yellow outlining, and I can do this. I can animate this guy on a separate layer, which even still, it's going to be kind of tricky because, you know, you can tell there's still a lot of lines, but there's not as many. I don't have those extra yellow lines anymore. Um, making it more difficult to see what the heck is going on. And I'm just doing kind of a throwaway job here, just to kind of illustrate the point. I don't even think that is what it does. But there you go. And then I grab my color and I can't fill it because I'm missing an outline, but that's not so the point. But I'm a perfectionist, so I'm going to fix it. Okay, there we go. So now I've got that shape in between. Terribly. Looks awesome. And then I can hit F7 on this layer and I can in between these shapes. Like this. I don't know, maybe that guy. Sure, who does that? Delete that and delete that. And then you turn on this guy and you're like, oh, that doesn't match up. So. Maybe this goes over here, I don't know, something like that. So now you've got your in-betweens on separate layers, and it's much easier to navigate and to kind of see one, one color at a time how you need to in-between your frames. After a while, you may not need to separate them out because it is sometimes a little quicker to leave them on the same layer. It just depends on where you're at, what your needs are. So. There's a few pro tips on in-betweening. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I hope you learned something.